please take your seats. Awesome. Wow, what an introduction. What an introduction. So blessed, so privileged. I love that, making God famous. Isn't that what we're about? Yes. You know, this is, this is my testimony today, but I'm putting Jesus on display here. Yes. You know, that, that's what our lives are about, putting Jesus on display. So you're going to might see my thumb go up now and then, and that's because that AJ is doing an awesome job. He's going to click to the next picture. So uh, can you do that right now for me? Yeah. <laughs> now, I've got to resist the urge to turn around and keep looking at these pictures. But I just want to start off by saying that life is a journey, amen? Yeah. It is a journey, and uh, there is a destination. Obviously, one day we'll pass from this life into, into eternity and be with the Lord forever. But while we're here, there's a plan, there's a purpose, there's a reason why you're here. So I just want to thank God for that. Switched on there. Come on. I'm not going to do it that big every time. So here's a picture. Now, look, there's going to be a few pictures here this morning, okay? And look, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a rehearsal moment because you're allowed to laugh, okay? Ha, 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 ha. Come on. <laughs> so there'll be a couple of pictures that'll... That'll make you laugh, and that's all right. I've already dealt with that. I can take it. I'm putting them, putting them up there. I've, I've, I've lined myself up for it. But before we start, I just want to make an announcement here about my King, about my Lord. Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Jesus is God's Son, my best friend and Saviour of the world. Jesus is the Lion of the tribe of Judah and the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to know God and eternal life. Come on, keep those amens coming. Jesus is my deliverer, my provider, and my healer. He is my peace, my strength, and my hope. Jesus is my source and my goal. You know, we sing a song and it has a part that goes like this. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness. Can't help myself, can I? I'm going to get you singing in a second. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Next part. Great are you, Lord. Lord, we bless you. Come on, give him praise this morning. You are so great, God. You are so awesome. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Amen. He's so awesome. Amen. Awesome. So, wow. I just want to say one other thing that giving my testimony is actually, we all have a testimony. Amen. And the Bible says in Revelations that uh, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So what does that mean? It means that God is speaking to you today. You hear my words, you hear my story. But I want everyone's heart to be open. I want everyone's ears to be open because God has a way of speaking. He speaks to the depths and he wants you to respond today. So let him, let him be speaking to you, which he will. And I pray that we would all be hearing and obeying. Amen. Let's pray. Lord. We thank you for this morning. I thank you for the great privilege that we are all together here and now, right now, right in the midst of what you're doing in this earth. But Lord, you're not looking for, for superheroes. You're looking for the Christian who will step up and obey your leading. That's all of us, God. So Lord, as I share my testimony, oh Lord, of my journey which is still continuing. Lord, I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. I give you all the thanks. And I lift up your name, Lord, because great are you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Am I shouting? Is that all right? Is that too loud for you on a Sunday morning? Come on. I've got to keep to my notes because I've only got so much time here. Praise God. Here we go. All right, let's uh, click. All right. Come on. Come on. You're going to laugh. Have a good laugh. That's a photo of me 
at 14. What happened, someone said. How insensitive. You know, body gets older, but hang on. So there I am at 14. You know, I was a typical 14-year-old for Karen Up, lived, grew up in Karen Up, was at the beach a lot, so my hair got really blonde. Bleach blonde. Okay. Two seconds. I've got the, uh, got the pictures here to remind me what's next. This is it. You know, this is as far as the technology goes today. You know us guys, we can't do hold a microphone and click things at the same time. So, um, okay. So at 14, you know, I was brought up in a, in a Christian home. My dad's a Catholic, good Catholic, and he's been on a journey himself. He's had incredible encounters with God over the years. His life's gone up and down, and as, our, as all our walk does, we, we have times when we feel nearer, closer. But I thank God for my dad and my mum who brought me up to believe in God, to, to believe and trust in Jesus for my salvation and always honour his name. Now, um, around, the, around the age of 14, I, I actually got to go and see Cross on the Switchblade, run Nicky Cruz story. Anybody hear that? Yes. Highly recommend it. It's an old one, but it's a goodie. And um, yeah, there was people that were ministering to me, sharing the gospel, and I heard it. I really got it. In my heart, in my heart of hearts, I believed in God. I wanted to be right with God. Challenge for me was I wasn't regularly in attendance at a church. I wasn't in a youth group. I wasn't getting discipled, as the Bible calls it. We need people around us to encourage us, to help us learn, to help to grow, to understand. One thing I did know and uh, was the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So every night I would get down on my knees at the age of 14 at my bedside and the only thing I knew to do was to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And I prayed that in earnest. And then I just, all I knew to do was, God, bless my mum and dad, bless my sisters, bless everybody, just bless them, God. So there was that acknowledgement of God. And of course, I picked up just by the Holy Spirit, we've got to bless others. So that was great. But the problem was, I wasn't locked in. I wasn't in fellowship, as, we, as a Christian term we use. I wasn't connected with good leaders, people that would encourage me and really take me on. See, mum and dad had a little bit of a disagreement. Dad was a Catholic, but mum was Bush Baptist, okay? <laughs> so they didn't really agree. So there was a little bit of, yeah, they didn't want, mum didn't want us going along to, to, all the, to, the, to the Catholic church. Unfortunate as it is, but that's fine. It worked out in the end, eh? <laughs> but uh, what happened then was, okay, a little bit more about me. Um, while I was around that age, let's have a look. Next, next picture, please. Here's another photo of me. <laughs> yeah, look at that hair. Dig those Hawaiian shirts. Wow. And that's me with my, my good mate. That's my first car there, an EJ station wagon. Fantastic. 500 bucks. Had holes in the floor at the back. If you're sitting in the back floor, I'd say, hey, don't stamp your feet. You, <laughs> you'll be doing a Flintstones. But there I am, first car. So here I was, and I was actually a really good uh, football player back then. <laughs> Go Eagles, come on. <laughs> Jeremy McGovern, we love you. And uh, I was actually a really good uh, right back, back um, flank um, player. I, the ball wouldn't get past me. I was actually good. I even got trophies. I was a great player. With a surname like Kappa, Warwick, <laughs> Warwick, where are you? It must have been in the genes somewhere. Good footy player. Good team sport. But then what happened was I discovered another sport that isn't a team sport. And I took up surfing. So here I am at my local surf break. <laughs> actually, this is me yesterday down at Binning Up. <laughs> Not. It was actually like that big. Here I am. Took up surfing. The ultimate me, it's mine, get out of the way, mine, mine, mine. You're like a seagull when you become a surfer. Everything is yours, get out of the way. Really, really selfish sport in a way. So I took up surfing and um, got quite good at it. So what was happening during this time, I basically began down the track 
unfortunately not with Christians, but with another youth group, the typical world's youth group, where partying began, alcohol began, cigarettes began, marijuana began, eventually trips and other chemicals were introduced into my body that really took a toll. Uh, here's a photo of me, <laughs> very skinny Brad. <laughs> Um, I'd just been, I think, just after a holiday to Bali where um, really just, uh, this is around the age of 20, 1920, and I'd been on this journey of drink, party, the party life. We thought it was pretty cool. For $5, you could get two jugs of beer back then. Unheard of now. But this, this lifestyle was, was really going to take its toll, as I was going to find out in the next couple of years, because... Um, I was an electrical apprentice. I was working on site. I was actually working on a multi-storey development down in Netherlands, 16-floor buildings. Not a good place to be going psychotic, you know. But uh, anyway, um, so there I was. I was starting to party, but what I found with marijuana especially was it had this side effect where I get really anxious, oh, I get really tight. And then when I started taking these other chemicals, like I said, there was these drugs, they were called black dots back then. I think, it, I think it was LSD. We didn't really ask. We didn't really care. So long as you got this incredible high that spun you out for hours and you saw things walking across the room and then airplanes flying around, it was just ridiculous. But putting poison in your body will have that effect. It's basically what happens. The same with, with barley. They have these magic mushrooms and they make a, a soup out of it or omelettes. And uh, all you're really doing is you might as well just get cordless drill and just drill holes in your brain. So it's basically what you're doing. You're destroying yourself. So there I was, mixing it all up. Drink, drugs, marijuana. And like this slide says, that the com combined these drugs effects can lead to illness, injury, and in certain cases, death. So I was on this journey. You know, the spirituality in my life hadn't gone away. I still had, a, I still had a, an acknowledgement and a belief and a, and a, um, an honouring of the name of Jesus. Like, I would never take the name of Jesus in vain. I still don't do that. Well, you'd expect that, but... <laughs> You know what I mean. <laughs> and, oh, God. Oh, you know, I just had, still had that good conscience. But I've realised now that the enemy, there is an enemy to our souls, and there's a, lot, there's a big diverse array of religions and spiritual directions that we can go in that will try and cater for that drive in us. And I was actually being driven towards the occult. I was dabbling with things. And what, as I got, I began to get ill. I began to get uh, really really started to swing up and down in my emotions, combined with the, the drugs, the alcohol, the marijuana, the, the mushrooms, the, and the anxiety and everything was just starting to really peak to the point where when the swings are going really rapidly up and down, you become what they call then manic depression, depressive or bipolar. So it gets to the point where there's a, there's a normal range of emotion and then it just starts swinging past that. And the term is psychotic. You become psychotic. Now, during this, during this time, I was, I was the, the life of the party. As far as anybody could tell from the outside, I was hilarious because I was more the up. I was more the up sort of funny party guy. And no one knew that this... No, I didn't know this was really happening. I was just partying as far as I was concerned. But I was partying to destruction, as it would seem, which is the fact. So what happened then, it came a day, I went and saw a doctor, GP, something happened. I cracked and police had to take me, I was sedated, I woke up in one of these. You know what that is? That's a padded cell in maximum security in a mental hospital here in Claremont. I woke up in there and it was profound that day what the... The, the male nurse, he was quite a character. Here I am in maximum security, Greylands Hospital. And um, the very morning after I've been taken in there, he opens the door. Opens the door, big bouncer behind him. He goes, wake up, Brad Kappa. You're in maximum. 
And how profound is that? Is that God speaking to me? I believe so. And I've been on a journey ever since of God drawing me out, bringing me to wholeness, ever since I walked out of that room. Now, I I spent three times I was back in that hospital system because what would happen is I would start to respond to the treatment and the drugs that they'd give me and then I would go back on my way. Would you believe they actually put me back on a 16-storey building? Hello? So God had to rescue me from a lot of things at that point. But um, don't you love it? My phone went on to um, screensaver. Anyway, so basically there I was in hospital and I started on this cycle of healing and relapse, healing, relapse. And during that time in hospital, I actually met Christian. A Christian guy took me to North Beach Baptist Church and I started attending church, which was good. I was really starting to get on the way of life. But what would happen? Slip back again. Stop taking my medication. Start drinking. Start smoking. It's like there's this vicious little war going on. We know what's right to do, but we struggle. I want to give you some hope today. We we all go through this. But what happens is there's breakthroughs, breakthrough moments where God frees you and gives you the ability to walk on in strength and not fall back. I came to a place on one of these occasions, which was inevitably a point I had to come to because I couldn't keep relapsing. The cost on my physical body, my mental health, and in every sense, you can imagine, it's just, you can't keep cracking up and going into hospital. It just takes its toll. And I'd actually, again, I was slipping on the slippery slope back down. I'd been at the pub all afternoon. I'd even drunk some scotch. I ended up at someone's house, as you do. Don't even know whose house it was. We're just partying. We don't care. And smoked some weed. And I'm sitting there on the lounge in this house. A few people there I sort of knew, as you do. It's sort of acquaintances. But look, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm sort of having this conversation in my head. Now take note, sometimes these conversations in your head are actually God talking to you. Not always, but this was definitely a God moment. Because what happened was I'm sitting there and I'm going, you know, inebriated. Hey, I'm a Christian. Yeah, that's right, you're a Christian. You don't have to do this anymore, you know, Brad. Yeah, that's right. I don't have to do this anymore. Yeah, you know, you're a Christian. You don't, you don't have to do this. It was amazing because I'm sitting there and it was just as if the Lord himself had sat on the lounge next to me like a good mate and, said, and was just rescuing me. The Bible says that in his kindness, God leads us to repentance. And what is repentance? It's our choice, a changed mind, a decision. See, He led me to that place in all his grace and mercy, speaking intimately to me on the the lounge. I had to step up. And it's funny, I did step up. I stood up at that party. I started walking around going, I'm a Christian. (laughs) I'm a Christian, yeah. Then one one of the guys goes, yeah, Brad, I'm a Christian too. Here, have another drink. (laughs) Excuse me, I need a drink. But... uh, Keep going. So what do, I, what do I have? A breakthrough moment, an opportunity. You know, and God will provide them for us all through life. It's up to us to step up, take a hold, go forward every time. Okay, where am I at? Thank you, Jesus. So from there I had this, it was a God conviction, God moment, because I had such a desire to get right with God. I wanted to get down to that North Beach Baptist Church and get water baptised immediately. It was such an earnest desire in me. And uh, sure enough, it happened. And within about three or four months, I was water baptised. I stood up in front of a group about this size, gave testimony there and water baptised. It was incredible because the Bible says you draw near to God, he draws near to you. And because I'd stood up publicly and, and announced and proclaimed his work in my life, Something powerful happened. 
Now, not all of us have had that opportunity. And I know, look, powerful things will happen for us. But the main thing is I repented. I obeyed his command to receive Christ as my Lord and Saviour full on, get water baptised and begin this journey. And, And it was incredible because I really felt like I was hearing from God. I was really beginning to walk this walk with God. Amen. Let's give God a big hand. AJ. Uh, next one. Go back. Go back. Go back. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Next one. Next one. That's me. So when we look at these things, there's a photo of me. And here I am a bit. You can look at the eyes. You can look at where I'm at. A bit washed out. On the journey. And, um, you know, it's awesome to be on the journey with Jesus. It's the only place to be, believe me. Um, As I went forward, I just want to say that, you know, there's a lot of good and well-meaning people out there. While I was on this journey, before I got right with God, people were trying to help me with their, their witchcraft and their occult, their new age and everything else. And... For them, they, that, they were trying to help me, but I just want to say this, the only, the only way I got totally free is with Jesus. You know? The only way I got free was with Jesus. Uh, all the good intentions and, and religious rituals and everything aside, reality was God came, spoke to my heart, and, and it was Jesus Christ. Amen. So, next picture. So we all need to come to this place of humbling ourselves before God, receiving what he has given. See, Jesus went to the cross and died for our sins. But he rose from the dead. He didn't stay dead. It was actually God in Christ reconciling us to him. He paid the price. We've all sinned. We've all blown it. We've all blown it, but God said, well, I know they're going to blow it, but I'm going to pay the price. It's like we, we, stand, we all stand before a judge. It says, you're guilty. But Jesus steps in and says, yeah, but I'm paying their fine. I'm paying their fine. And he's done that for you and me. Amen. Give him another clap. Oh, yeah. So, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for embracing us. And God for embracing us as you have. So real. So, on the journey, on the way of healing, starting to look a bit healthier here. I should have photoshopped it. There's a bit of food on my chin there, I think. (laughs) Anyway, not hiding anything. Total transparency here. (laughs) But on the journey, on the journey. So, just want to say, you know, like I said, you're allowed to laugh, but there's some, some photos that will, will make me go quiet and the next one will do that. And the reason is, I just want to thank God for what he's done, what he's given. Thank you, Jesus. You know, here's my family, my awesome wife, Belinda, my daughters, Megan and Caitlin. Come on, help me, Jesus. So blessed. You know, I could have jumped off a 16-storey building. God held me back. Yes. He had better things in mind. Yes. And so it's the same for you, my friend. Yes. Amen. Yes. You know, we, we all grow older. We all grow older. You know, <laughs> come on, if you're going to laugh, make it a good one. It's all right, I can take it. You know, growing, it's like, We've got got a fridge magnet at home that says this. Growing older is inevitable. Growing up is a choice. You know, this body's going to wear out. But, you know, this body is here to serve us as we walk out this life with God in the earth in this opportunity we have right now to be a blessing to everyone around us. I just want to say the transformation that is most significant in life is in the inner man of the heart, the real you. I'm so glad I know Jesus. He is my constant source of strength, life, love and hope. And he has set me free from all anxiety, depression, fear and doubt. 
The big question people will ask is, well, how's it done, Brad? Okay, we've heard a bit of your story. You got healed, you're being healed, you've been on this journey, but how is it done? How can I be free from depression, anxiety, negative thoughts, hopelessness? Well, the fact is at different times I've needed medication to deal with chemical imbalances in my physical body and also definitely godly counsel and prayer. Coming humbly and, and to people that are you know, trustworthy, we don't just go to anybody, we go to good godly counsel, our pastors, and we allow this process of healing in the inner man to happen. It's in our emotions, in our mind. God will work through and help you through those deeper things. And hey, we're still on a journey. Have I arrived? No, but I'm well down the track. So God has been gently and at times dramatically dealing with spiritual, emotional and physical needs as I've walked with him every day. So the world looks at the emotional needs and the physical needs because that's all they can measure. But God knows it's a spiritual need which is first and foremost what we need. We need to be right with God. We need to be born again. We need to be walking with him first and foremost. But there is a process of transformation in our soul. The Bible tells us that we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Amen. So there's things we must do. First of all, oh, here's a picture. I just want to show you this one. Take a good look at that. Take a real good look at that picture. This is a very dramatic, symbolic representation of the reality of what Christ has done for you and me, actually for all mankind. And what it shows is uh, at the top of the photo we see or picture we see heaven or the heavenly realm. Back here we have the world. And in between there's this chasm, hell I suppose, the fires of hell. Now look at what's happening. Jesus said there's two ways. There's a broad way that leads to destruction and most people are on it. There's a narrow way that leads to life. He says, I am that way. He said it. I am the only way that's going to see you through. You can see the nails there, the blood. on That cross represents the cross of Jesus Christ. It's only by the cross of Jesus, by our, our acknowledging him and what he did for me, he took my sins, he paid my fine. Personally, I have to receive that and then I can be clothed with life. And then I will. Basically, I can now become a citizen of heaven. Not when I die. Right now, if you've given your heart and life to Christ, you are now a citizen of heaven. I know that the inevitable is dealt with, but there's a purpose for me today. But so many people, like I was, unfortunately, I'd chosen the broad way. And you see so many people, like in that picture, just blatantly and willingly just throwing themselves off, thinking, well, everybody else is doing it. No, think for yourself, my friend. Listen to what God's saying to your heart today. Listen to your heart. You can choose the way of life in Christ. So, Acts 2.38 is a very powerful scripture. In this, the Apostle Peter says, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So number one, this is what you must do. You can repent, and then you can receive the gift of eternal life and be born again. The life of God comes into you and makes you a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is or she is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That old life's gone. That old life's gone. We might still need some healing from the wounding and the damage, the physical damage, but in terms of my eternity, in terms of the real me inside, I am now destined for glory. I am now walking with Christ. I am a new creation. It means you're a new being, absolutely brand new. So we are then right with God and on the way of life. Now we must believe and follow his leading. We do this by regularly reading God's word, the Bible, spending time one-on-one -on -one with God every day and also joining with other Christians regularly 
to encourage each other. Also, we must find ways to give out. So these are the answers to your question. How did you get well? Born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, walking with God in fellowship, in his word, and giving out. Giving out. Rivers of living water will flow out of you, Jesus said. So we must find ways we can give out, serving others in our church, our local community. This way we begin focusing on the needs of others also and the life and love of God flows through you. Amen? This is vital. One of the biggest lessons I've learned, believe me, it took a long time, is that it's not all about me. It's not all about me, albeit at times I've had to really focus on me, but I've found by reaching out and wanting to bless others, I'm being healed. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 11.25 says, The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered. So as you give out, God will continually pour through your life and give to others. So just to finish off this morning, I just want to ask you, where are you at on this journey? Where are you at? This is my wife's land cruise, by the way. Belinda's beloved Landy 80 series. Awesome. Who's got a four, four-wheel drive here? Oh, not many of you. A couple of you. Chris down the back. But we all know that you know, when we go on a holiday, sometimes it's about the journey, not just the destination. I want to ask you, where are you at on this journey with God? There's people here today who have not taken that step and received the gift of eternal life given by Jesus Christ. There's people here today who are not sure about if I died tonight, would I end up in heaven? Would I actually arrive in front of God and be accepted? And there's people here today basically are saved, are walking with God know that they're destined for heaven. But know, and I put myself in this group, that we need to get a greater passion, a greater level of response, step up and into everything that God has called us to. Amen? Who's in that group? Who wants to get on with it? Everything that God has called you and me to do and be, we want it all. Amen? Jesus paid that price. It's not a half-baked thing where, oh, oh, maybe... We've got to be done with all doubt, all insecurity, all wondering. It's a fact. It's a great scripture in Hebrews 11.6. It says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hey, we must believe that he is. That sounds pretty profound, but there's a lot of people that would challenge that. But come on, look around. The evidence is everywhere. Creation itself declares a creator. Evidence is everywhere. Most people when asked will say, oh, there's a high power. But I want to tell you that he is a person. He sees me. He sees you. He's personally interested in you. And he has a claim on your life because of the blood of Jesus. He wants to save you from that broad way and bring you into his beautiful kingdom. He can do that. He will do that. But the choice is always yours. Let's be done with unbelief, doubting and half-hearted commitment to God. Amen. And the second thing I just want to say here, that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. No matter what we're going through, no matter how hard it's been, no matter how I feel, God doesn't change. God's purposes don't change. God's power hasn't gone. His his destiny for you hasn't changed. We can put it on pause. But God, we don't want that. We want to be stepping up. Amen. We want to be moving on. Draw near to God, says in James 4.8. He will draw near to you. Can you hear his voice today, folks? Can you hear his voice today? Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. That's our job. That's our job. 
Let's get the Word of God in our heart. Let's be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's be encouraging one another. So I want to encourage you today, be wholehearted in your pursuit of God. Stop doubting. Really believe. He is real. He loves you. And He has a plan and a purpose for your life. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we're so grateful. So thankful, Lord. I personally, having made this announcement, this testimony, God, it is a testimony of the life and love and power and desire of the living God in Jesus Christ. And Lord, today we all, with one heart and one mind, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honour. And Lord, we open our hearts to you. We open our hearts to you, God, and we know that you are the healer of our bodies, you are the restorer of our souls, and you are the saviour for all of life. And that we know, God, we, we are certain that we will be with you in glory. And I just want to, just while all, everybody's eyes are closed, if you're here today and you're not sure, you're not sure, you're not really convinced that if you died tonight, you would be right with God and you would walk into that beautiful place called heaven. Well, I want to let you know that we're here to help you and we want to pray for you. If there's anybody here who would like prayer, we will pray for you and we will help you to take that step. Is there anybody? Just lift your hand, raise it up. If you're not sure, if you're not sure, it's great. Thanks, guys. Two hands there. Just so wonderful, God. So, Lord, and there's people here who may have started on the journey and uh, maybe doubting, maybe struggling, know that they need to step up. And we want to pray for you today as well. So in a little while, we're going to open up the front here. And like I said, everyone's, everyone's eyes closed still. But we're just going to ask God to come, minister to us all, to take us on that next step in our journey. Now, in response to that, I want you, if you feel led, to come out the front. So those that want prayer to receive Christ, to want to be sure to stand over here on my left, your right. Those that want to present themselves to God and say, God, I want to go the next level with you. I want all that you have for me. I want to be done with doubting, unbelief and fear. Come out the front. And anybody who's struggling with anxiety or any depression, come out here as well and we'll pray for you, all right? So please do that. Respond to God. You're not responding to me. You are by getting up and moving, you are responding to God. Amen. Where's my band? I'll get the band up now. Come on, everyone on your feet. We're going to sing a song. I'm going to just pray because I just want us all to pray together right now. This prayer, this prayer. Now, those who want Christ and certainty over here on the left, those that want to go full on for God to the next level, passionate on fire for God over here. So let's all pray this prayer. My friends that have come out the front, especially this is important for you, but for all of us. Say, dear Jesus, I come to you today. I confess that I am a sinner, but I also know that you are my saviour. Today, I, I receive your gift of eternal life. I put my trust in you. I am a new creation. And I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So if I can just, we can just start the song. We'll get the team out the front as well. We're going to close the meeting in a couple of moments, but out of respect, could we just, everyone just keep still, sing the song, but let's all be seeking God. Who wants to go on for God? Come on, we all do. Thank you, Lord. Let's give these people a hand that come out the front. So good. Come on. We're going to pray now.